I recently got a new joiner in the shop. This is the Jet JJ6HHBT for those that need to know model numbers. It's a six inch benchtop machine with a true helical cutter head and a cast iron fence, but it's still a benchtop unit. So I wanted to upgrade it a little bit by making a new home for it and adding some infeed and outfeed extensions. I started off with the easy part and that's making a base for it to live on. Here I'm cutting up all the pieces that make up the table. This is a super easy, foolproof design for shop furniture. The legs are just two pieces screwed together at 90 degrees. There are short aprons on the top and bottom that connect the legs together, then longer aprons that connect those leg sets together, and then a lower shelf and of course the top. I don't usually use glue on these types of things because I like having the ability to take it apart and make changes down the road or even reuse the material if I get rid of the tool someday. Once the top was screwed down, I cleaned it up with the sander and then brought the little joiner to its new home and secured it in place with the mounting tabs that it comes with. Now, this by itself would be just fine, but I wanted to try making some extensions for the infeed and outfeed tables so I can more easily flatten a little bit longer boards. For this, I'm using 18 mil phenolic ply, which is basically bulk of birch with a plastic-like coating on both sides. The sides of the factory tables are not 90 degrees, so I used a sliding T-bevel to determine the angles and then tilted the blade on the table saw to match that angle. Then I could cut about a blade's width from one side, a little deeper than the stock table is thick. And I also cut the mating side of the extension table piece to match that same angle since the blade was already set up at the correct angle anyways. Now the easy way would be to cut the angle off the top of the brace instead of off of the inside, but I want to be able to drill holes straight into the brace to mount it a little later on in the video, so doing it the hard way now will make life a lot easier for me later on. Now, not all the angles were the exact same, so I made sure to not only check the infeed end separate from the outfeed end, but also the same sides of each end. This is one of those projects where you really want to take your time and take as many precautions as possible, because the more effort you put into this now means the less effort you'll have to put into it later. I held everything together with clamps just to do a dry fit, and that's what I figured out that the end of the outfeed table also has an angle on it. And once I took care of that, I did one more dry run to check my progress, and I couldn't help but think that the extensions looked a little amateur. I wanted to taper the braces to give it more of a polished look, like a full-size joiner, so I trimmed off a little bit of the bottom portions of each brace using the bandsaw and the router table and a carefully placed piece of MDF. I'm going to use the tops of the braces to align the tables, and I wanted everything to line up as perfect as possible, so I ran the top of each brace through the joiner to make sure there wasn't any saw blade marks or any other imperfections. Now, to get the braces perfectly flush with the tables, I clamped one, two, three blocks to the face of the table to use as guides. Then once I had the brace flush at the end with the table, I clamped the brace itself to the one, two, three blocks as well. This worked really well for alignment and it was a heck of a lot more accurate than just feeling for a reveal with my fingertip. I used screws to attach the two parts together, but I didn't have the right size countersink bit on hand. So I used a brad point bit the size of the screw head to cleanly cut the first layer or so on the phenolic ply. And then I used a drill bit just slightly larger than the screw shank diameter to drill the pilot holes. Pre-drilling into plywood is absolutely critical in situations like this. If you don't, even if you're using self-countersinking screws, the plies will separate internally and you'll be left with small bumps in the material every place where you put a screw. I used some scraps to make a drill guide jig for the mounting bolts. It's just a piece of MDF with a stop block at one end and a guide at the other end with two eighth inch holes pre-drilled where the bolts should go. I could press the jig against the extension, slide it all the way forward until it stopped, and then clamp it into place. Then I could start with an eighth inch drill bit, drilling all the way through the extension brace and stock table, and then re-drilling with progressively bigger drill bits until finishing at 3 eighths, which is the size of the bolts that I'm using. So that I didn't have to make a new jig for each side and end, I attached the parts together with double-sided tape so that I could remove and replace the guide itself. Sometimes double-sided tape doesn't like to stick as well to MDF as it does to other materials, so I use a clamp to apply a little more pressure, and that usually does the trick. 
The bolts fit perfectly fine the way that it was, but I decided I wanted to have a little more adjustability just in case. So using 3 8 inch drill bits for alignment, I clamped the drill guides to the braces one by one and bored the holes a little bit bigger to 7 16 Once done, this gave me a little bit more wiggle room for adjustment. The hardest part of this whole project by far was getting the extensions dialed in. In theory, since the tops of the braces are joined in straight, it should be easy to just clamp some one, two, three blocks to the extension and then to the stock table and everything should just automatically line up perfect. But in reality, there was a lot of back and forth adjusting that needed to happen. But between the one, two, three blocks and using the fence as a straight edge clamping guide, I eventually got both sides dialed in. All in all, this worked out pretty well, and of course, only time will tell how well it holds up. Obviously, I'd rather just have a bigger joiner with longer tables, but it isn't in the cards right now. There is a slight amount of flex on the extensions at the very, very ends if you really push down hard, but it's not enough to make a difference in regular use. And hey, it's about a thousand times better than what I had before, which was nothing.